Good morning. My name is Evelyn Craighead, a slave, a servant of Jesus Christ. And I would like to welcome you to the Feeding House Ministries, a teaching ministry that focuses on your soul and your eternal destiny, a ministry that uncompromisingly teaches the truth of God's word. And our scripture teaching this morning comes from Mark chapter 10, and I will be reading verses 28 through 31 from the New King James Version. Then Peter began to say to him, See, we have left all and followed you. So Jesus answered and said, Assuredly, I say to you, there is no one who has left house or brothers or sisters or father or mother or wife or children or lands for my sake and the gospels who shall not receive a hundredfold now in this time houses and brothers and sisters and mothers and children and lands with persecution and in the age to come eternal life but many who are first will be last and the last first my subject for this morning is the problem of rewards rewards according to the world's terminology are prizes payments returns compensations, bonuses, and rewards in what the disciple, the believer, receives for following Christ. Mm -hmm. Yet to many people, the idea of rewards in heaven is foreign and it's rejected by others feeling that the idea of God rewarding people is mercenary, mm -hmm. greedy. They feel that rewards of rank and position or possessions and levels of responsibility have no place in a perfect world. However, Christ himself endured the cross for the joy that was set before him. Amen. Hebrews 12 verse 2 says, Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. And it said of Moses that he esteemed the reproach, the insult, the disgrace of Christ, greater riches than the treasures in Egypt. Mm. Hebrews 11 verse 26 said, Esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures in Egypt, for he looked to the reward. Mm. Scripture abounds, it overflows with the teaching of rewards in the world to come, and rewards is the point of this message. And Jesus deals with the problem of rewards, mm -hmm. the problem of just what a true disciple will receive both in this world and in the world to come. Mm -hmm. Luke 16 verses 10 through 12 says, He who is faithful in what is least is faithful also in much, and he who is unjust in what is least is unjust also in much. Therefore, if you have not been faithful in the unrighteous mammon, who will commit to your trust the true riches? And if you have not been faithful in what is another man's, who will give you what is your own? Mm. As a Christian believer, you are to be faithful in handling possessions because it's your faithfulness that determines what you will be trusted with eternally. Yeah. And money and possessions are the least trust given to a person. Mm -hmm. Compared to eternal salvation, love, joy, peace, and the absolute assurance and confidence of eternal life, money and possessions are nothing. Amen. They are nothing compared Amen. to the presence and companionship, the power and leadership of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. They are nothing compared to the possessing of the Word of God and the promises of God. Amen. They are nothing compared to knowing God personally and to being made an heir of God and a joint heir with Christ. Hallelujah. Unfaithfulness in the use of money and possessions will disqualify you from true heavenly riches. You may think your life and possessions are your own to do with as you will, mm -hmm. but they are not. Your life and possessions are God's, yeah. and God has trusted you with life and possessions only for as long as you're on this earth. Amen. As a holder of life and possessions, you're only a steward over your life and possessions. You're only a steward over all that you are and all that you have. When you die, you can't take your life mm. or your possessions with you yes. out of this world. It's like Job said, you came into this world with nothing, you will leave this world with nothing. Your life and possessions are only temporary that are given to you as a trust. 
If you handle your life and possessions badly, you show that you are not fit to be trusted with responsibility in the new heaven and earth. And scripture says that true heavenly riches and rewards are beyond our comprehension. Amen. Rewards dealing with our nature or state of being, such as being adopted as a son of God, mm -hmm. being made blameless and harmless, being given eternal life, being given an enduring substance, mm -hmm. being given a glorious body, yeah. being given eternal glory and honor, being given eternal rest and peace, being given the blessings of the Lord, being given the knowledge mm. of Christ Jesus, being given endurable riches and righteousness, yeah. being made priest, being given a crown of incorruption, mm. a crown of righteousness, a crown of life, and a crown of glory. Hallelujah. But that's not all. God has many more rewards for us. As believers, we will receive rewards dealing with work, position, or rule. Rewards such as being made exalted mm. beings, being made ruler over many things, being given the kingdom of God, being given a position of rule and authority, mm -hmm. being given eternal responsibility yeah. over cities, being given thrones and the privilege of reigning forever, the privilege of surrounding the throne of God, and being made priest and kings but wait there's more Amen. as believers we will be given rewards dealing with our inheritance or wealth rewards such as being made an heir of God mm -hmm. being given an incorruptible inheritance being given the blessings of the Lord and being given durable unsearchable riches and righteousness but unfaithfulness disqualifies you from all that you would have received. Mm. Mark chapter 8 verse 36 says, For what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? And your soul is your life. Our lives and possessions are God's. But if we are not faithful in using them, mm -hmm. how can we expect to be compensated? How can we expect to be rewarded? Yes. Just keep in mind, you will never have all that you would have if you fail to pursue God and to give others what to do them. Scripture says in verse 28, Then Peter began to say to him, See, we have left all and followed you. Peter asked about rewards because he had just been shocked. He had just seen a rich young man with enormous potential turn and walk away from Jesus. And the man had rejected Jesus because he was unwilling to forsake all that he had. He was unwilling to forsake his wealth to use it to meet the needs of the world. Then Peter heard Jesus give an earth-shaking discussion on riches, on just how difficult it is for people with riches to enter heaven. Why? Because they are unwilling to give their wealth to meet the needs of the world. Yeah. To enter heaven, you must forsake all. You must give all that you are and all that you have to save a desperate world. Mm -hmm. And the demand sounded hard and stringent. It was stern, strict, tough, and severe. And Peter was shocked and stunned. He felt that he and the disciples had given all. And he was almost certain that they were holding nothing back. Mm. But he wanted to make absolutely sure. Yeah. And after what Jesus had just said, anyone would need assurance. Matthew 19 verse 25 says, When his disciples heard it, they were greatly astonished, saying, Who then can be saved? The disciples were shocked. They were thoroughly disappointed. Christ was saying something that was diametrically opposed mm. to what they and everyone else had always thought. That prosperity, wealth, mm. comfort, and things is God's blessing that a person receives and has because God is blessing him. That prosperity is the reward of righteousness and obedience. And that God blesses the person with the things of this earth if they are righteous and obedient. However, Christ was saying just the opposite. Christ was saying that a prosperous per person would most likely never enter heaven. That property posed such a dangerous threat to a person that his eternal doom was almost assured. Mm. Few people sell everything and give it all away. And few people, rich or poor, control their dreams and urges to have more. And the disciples, as all honest people are, knew this. 
They also knew the extreme demands Jesus was making to be a true follower of his. Yeah. And they, unlike so many of us in our attempts to soften his words, understood exactly what Jesus was saying, and his extreme words were shocking. Mm. They couldn't see how anyone could be saved. Matthew 19, verse 26 says, But Jesus looked at them and said to them, With men this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. The answer Jesus gave to their question about salvation said nothing to give them personal assurance. With men, this is impossible, but with God, all things are possible. The disciples sensed a deep need for assurance. Had they done enough? Had they given enough? They thought so. They were almost sure they had, but had they? Mm. Matthew 19 verse 27 says, Then Peter answered and said to him, See, we have left all and followed you. Therefore, what shall we have? Peter somewhat meekly said, Lord, behold, look, we have abandoned all and followed you. We have surrendered all to you. Therefore, what shall we have? Mm -hmm. Shall we receive eternal life? Mm. And Jesus used Peter's question to teach a wonderful truth. They, his own dear apostles, and all who follow him afterwards can rest assured that they will be enormously rewarded. Amen. We have left all. What a glorious testimony. Just think about these men. They left all for Christ's sake and the Gospels. They left family, friends, businesses, professions, and wealth. They left all in order to meet the needs of a desperate world, but they also readily met the needs of their family. Even Jesus saw to it that his mother was cared for. So leaving all doesn't mean that you desert or shirk your responsibility. Mm -hmm. It means centering your life and possessions on Christ yeah. and using all that you are and all that you have to serve him and to meet the needs of the world. Amen. It means putting Christ first. And the disciples followed Jesus in his gospel, not some other self-proclaimed Messiah or false message. They knew Jesus to be the true Messiah, yeah. the son of the living God. And they had committed their lives and possessions. They had committed all that they were and had to him and his gospel. And leaving all and following Christ are the two bases for reward. Anyone who leaves all and follows Christ can expect to be rewarded. And this is the wonderful truth Jesus was about to teach his disciples. Amen. They were uneasy because of what had just happened to the rich young ruler mm -hmm. and because of Jesus' comments about the incident. Mm -hmm. And Jesus wanted to assure them that they were very dear to him because they had left all and were following him. He wanted them to know that they would be rewarded and rewarded abundantly. Mm -hmm. Scripture says in verses 29 through 30, so Jesus answered and said, Assuredly, I say to you, there is no one who has left house or brothers or sisters or father or mother or wife or children or lands for my sake and the gospels who shall not receive a hundredfold now in this time houses and brothers and sisters and mothers and children and lands with persecutions and in the age to come eternal life. Jesus made an astounding problem promise, an amazing mm -hmm. promise. The true disciple will be abundantly rewarded. In fact, he will receive a hundred times what he gives up and sacrifices. Amen. But notice a crucial point. What's given is given for Christ's sake yes. and the gospels. Your motive has to be that you're giving for Christ and the spread of the gospel. You're sacrificing and giving what you have to the Lord and his cause. You're doing your part. Mm. You're doing all you can to accomplish the mission of redemption and the helping of mankind. But notice what Jesus mentioned, the giving of housing and family. And there are two ideas here. Mm -hmm. Some people have been rejected by family and lost their home, and we're guilty of that. When they turn to Jesus for salvation or they set out to serve Jesus, their family rejected them and turned away from them, and this is what Harry and I have experienced. All true disciples serve Jesus, put him first. Amen. We take all that we are and have, mm -hmm. including family and house, and we use it for Christ's sake and the gospel. Yes. 
house and family are sacrificed for Christ. That is, house and family are centered around Christ and are used for Christ. Yeah. House and family are known as a place where Christ is honored and a place that's used to spread the gospel. There's also the fact that a true disciple serves Jesus away from house and family. Mm -hmm. As a disciple, you sacrifice, you leave your house and family to serve Jesus out in the world through visiting, ministering, and preaching, doing whatever your missionary call is. Amen. And this often involves being away from home and family for extended periods of time. Mm -hmm. And an example of that would be evangelists, missionaries, even ministers who are on call day and night. But notice the glorious promise of Christ. The true disciple who gives up house and family for Christ's sake in the gospel will receive a hundredfold. Amen. He will receive a spiritual bond and kinship with a much larger family, the family of God throughout Amen. heaven and earth. He will receive fellowship and communion, a very present and practical help when needed through the local church and fellowship of believers within his own community. 1 John chapter 1, verse 3 says, that which we have seen and heard, we declare to you, that you also may have fellowship with us. And truly our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. He will receive the presence of the Spirit of God who communes with him and directs him day by day. Mm -hmm. As a true believer, you need to make sure you're in a local church or fellowship that's truly centered on Christ and his gospel. Amen. Because not every church is. And if you think about it, Every church needs to search its heart to make sure it honors Christ and his gospel. Amen. And that it has a warm heart and a spiritual bond with open arms and strong fellowship that are needed among God's people. Amen. But not only did Jesus mention the giving of housing and family, he mentioned the giving of property and wealth. The promise of being blessed materially, the promise of receiving a hundredfold is astounding to the world, but not to the believer. Mm. The believer understands what Jesus is saying. Jesus is laying down God's principle of money, finances, riches, possessions, material goods, giving, and stewardship, and whatever we want to call mammon and the things of this world that we value. Mm. Mark 10 verse 23 says, Then Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, how hard it is for those who have riches to enter the kingdom of God. But the, the principle is simple, and it can be stated several ways. As a true believer, you seek the kingdom of God yeah. and his righteousness first. Yeah. And then the necessities of life are given to you. You simply give all that you are and all that you have to the kingdom of God. And God sees to it that you have what's needed to take care of your necessities. Mm -hmm. And the idea is a present experience, a yeah. continuous process. As a true believer, you keep on giving of yourself and what you have, and God will keep on giving to you, the believer. Amen. As a true believer, you work so hard you, that you will have enough to give to others. Your very purpose for working isn't only to take care of your own needs, mm -hmm. but to also earn enough to help others. And again, the idea is a continuous process. Amen. As a true believer, you work and earn and give to others so God continues to give to you so that you can continue to spread the gospel and help others. And as a true disciple, you give all that you are and have to meet the needs of a desperate world, and God sees to it that you receive more. Amen. But what you receive isn't given for you to keep in store up. Mm -hmm. As a believer, God replenishes you so that you can continue to reach the world and help. Amen. As a true believer, you keep on giving, and God keeps on giving to you so that for as long as you live, you can continue to spread the gospel and meet the needs of the world. Amen. The whole idea is that as a believer, you never see an end to what you receive from God. Yes. The giving and receiving goes on and on, never ending. The resource is unending. It never stops. Amen. But there's another idea behind what Jesus was saying, the idea of security and confidence and assurance. The person who seeks God first, mm -hmm. the person who gives all that he is and has, well. is assured of always being taken care of. God promises the true believer that if he will truly seek God first, he will always have food, clothing, and shelter. And that's a fact. Amen. And you can't put a price tag on such assurance, confidence, and security. It's invaluable. 
more than a hundredfold. Amen. As long as you're a true believer and you remain on this earth until God is ready to take you home to heaven, you can be assured that God will take care of you. Amen. Matthew 6.33 says, But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. And then on top of all of this, there is life eternal, the glorious experience of living forever in all the majesty and glory mm. of God yes. and serving him forever. Scripture says in verse 30, Who shall not receive a hundredfold now in, in this time houses and brothers and sisters and mothers and children and lands with persecutions and in the age to come eternal life. Now this is the part we don't like, but true, the true disciple also receives the reward of persecution. And this is a shocking statement because how can persecution be considered a reward? Mm -hmm. And Peter tells us in 1 Peter chapter 4 verse 14, if you are reproached, for the name of Christ, blessed are you for the spirit of glory and of God rest upon you. On their part, he is blasphemed, but on your part, he is glorified. As a believer, being reproached for Christ means that you suffer for righteousness. That is, mm -hmm. you're persecuted, abused, and ridiculed for Christ. Yes. Philippians 1 verse 29 says, for to you it has been granted on behalf of Christ, not only to believe in him, but also to suffer for his sake. When you suffer for Christ, the spirit of glory and of God rests upon you. Amen. You are given a very special closeness, a oneness with Christ that's so beyond imagination that it's unexplainable. What happens is this. The Holy Spirit infuses you, the believer, a disciple of Christ, mm -hmm. with a deep, intense consciousness of the Lord's presence, a consciousness mm -hmm. so deep that it can't be experienced apart from some severe experience of suffering. Amen. As a believer in suffering for Christ, you also experience a very special identification with Christ. Just as the Lord suffered on behalf of the disciple, the believer, so now the disciple, the believer, suffers on behalf of the Lord. Yes. Colossians chapter 1 verse 24 says, I am glad when I suffer for you in my body, for I am participating in the suffering of Christ that continue for his body, the church. There is a sense in which the disciple's sufferings fill up the sufferings of Christ and complete the sufferings of Christ for the church. And these two experiences, gaining a deeper consciousness of the Lord's presence and being used to complete the suffering for the church, are gained only through suffering. Yes. And for the believer, they make suffering a privilege and a joy because as a disciple, you suffer even as your Lord suffered. Matthew 5 verses 11 through 12 says, Blessed are you when they revile and persecute you and say all kinds of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. But listen to verse 30 again. Who shall not receive a hundredfold now in this time houses and brothers and sisters and mothers and children and lands with persecutions and in the age to come eternal life? The true disciple, the true believer, receives eternal life. And eternal life is real life. It's the very life of God himself. Amen. It's the very energy, force, mm -hmm. being, essence, principle, and power of life. Mm -hmm. It has more to do with quality than with what life really is, mm -hmm. than with duration. Because to live forever in this present world isn't necessarily a good thing. Amen. Our world and our body needs changing. And that changed life is found only in eternal life. And the only being who can be said to be eternal is God. Amen. Therefore, life, supreme life, is found only in God. And to possess eternal life is to know God. Once you know God in Jesus Christ, whom he has sent, you have eternal life. You shall live forever. Amen. But more essential, you have the supreme quality of life, the very life of God himself. Yes. John chapter 5 verse 24 says, Most assuredly I say to you, He who hears my word and believes in him who sent me has everlasting life and shall not come into judgment, but has passed from death into life. As believers... 
Christ not only promises to reward us in this life, mm -hmm. he promises to reward us in the world to come with eternal life. Yes. Imagine the reward of living forever in a perfect mm -hmm. state of being. Imagine the heavens and earth being made into a new heavens and earth. Imagine being made perfect and eternal mm -hmm. and living forever in that perfect world is what Christ promises Amen. to the true disciple, the person who gives all that he is and all that he has for the sake of Christ in the gospel. Scripture says in verse 31, but many who are first will be last and the last first. Jesus has assured and warned believers of reward and judgment. God is going to switch and change and reverse the order of people in heaven. Mm -hmm. Many who are first in this world are going to be placed last and they're going to be last forever in all eternity. Yes. But many who are last are going to be placed first by God forever. Psalm 75 verse 7 says, But God is the judge. He puts down one and exalts another. Amen. God is going to place every person exactly where he belongs. He's going to rectify injustices. No matter what honor, respect, approval, and rank a person may have on earth, if that person belongs last, God is going to place him last. But if he belongs first, mm -hmm. God is going to place him first. And Christ actually says that many changes are coming. The idea is that the majority of the people will be switched. In God's eyes, some of the dearest, most repentant, heartbroken, and diligent people are now last. But they will be switched because God is going to exalt them to be ever so near and close to him. Amen. Luke chapter 1 verse 52 says, He has put down the mighty from their thrones and exalted the lowly. Amen. In the world to come, the values of this world will be reversed. To the general public, the rich ruler stood first, and the poor disciples stood last. But God saw things from the perspective of eternity, and the first became last while the last became first. And those who are first in their own eyes will be last in God's eyes. Amen. But those who are last in their own eyes will be rewarded as first. And what an encouragement this is for the true disciple, the true believer. Those who have desired to be Christ's disciples and have humbly served others are most qualified to be great in heaven. But rewards in heaven aren't given on the basis of merit, time served, or any other earthly standards. Amen. What matters in heaven is your commitment to Christ. Amen? Amen. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you for your word today. We thank you for reminding us that you exalt the humble, but you humble the proud. That there are rewards, eternal rewards. That all the blessings that we receive have come from you. But there's a requirement that we believe and obey your son, Jesus. Help us to humble ourselves before you, Father God. That we may all receive every eternal blessing you had your son Jesus to die for us to have. You truly are our everything. And we thank you, Father God, for being our Father. Thank you for your love and your grace and your mercy. Thank you for continuously teaching us your truth, that we may be better disciples and greater witnesses and testimonies for you in this lost and dying world. Let your will be done. And thank you, Holy Spirit, for guiding this worship service. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.